Hello everyone, this is Susanna from Hold It Right There Sewing Patterns. Welcome back to my video tutorial series for the Meridian Sling. To make the Meridian Sling, please purchase the sewing pattern available on my website linked below. In this video, I will walk through the steps for creating the front and back zipper pockets on the bag exterior. Grab your pattern instructions and follow along with me now on page four, beginning with step three. Locate exterior front top A and zipper pocket facing D. We're going to mark the centers and to do so you can either refer to the center markings on the pattern pieces or you can fold the fabric pieces in half matching the side edges and I'm folding wrong sides together and where creased is the center. So I'm going to mark A at the top and the bottom where creased on the right side of the fabric. Place zipper facing D wrong side up. Draw a line 7 eighths of an inch above the bottom straight edge. This line that we're drawing now will be part of the stitching line for the curved zipper window in a later step. Next, draw a vertical center line on the wrong side of zipper facing D. Place the zipper facing D pattern piece on top of the wrong side of the D fabric piece and match up the markings, both the 7 eighths of an inch horizontal marking and the center vertical marking. Use a fabric pen to trace out the cutout zipper window curves as shown on your paper pattern piece. Right sides together, place the zipper pocket facing D on top of the exterior front A. And you want to be sure that you are aligning the bottom straight edges. Be sure to match the center markings and then pin or clip together. Slowly and carefully, sew along the zipper window stitching line that you just traced onto the wrong side of D. We are now going to trim the zipper pocket window close to the stitching and it is helpful to notch at the curves or use pinking shears like I am. We're now going to press the zipper pocket window facing along the stitching line so that it folds back toward the wrong side of the exterior front top A. The zipper window measures 7 eighths of an inch in height. If needed, trim any overhang of D so that the bottom edges of A are even. I apologize for the quality of this segment of the video, but I just wanted to show you the tiniest little bit that I trimmed. Uh, that was actually a bit of the D facing showing at the bottom of A, and so these the, bo the bottom of A needs to be a completely even for the zipper to turn out straight in the next step. Locate exterior front bottom B and mark the top and bottom center on the right side just like we did in step three. I am using my markings on my paper pattern piece to mark my waxed canvas. I don't want to crease it, uh, so I'm not going to fold it to match the sides to determine the center. But depending on the textile you use, you can fold it or use your paper pattern piece to mark the centers. Right sides together, align the bottom straight edges of the exterior front top A with a top straight edge of exterior front bottom B. Be sure that A is centered with B. Pin or clip. Sew using a half inch seam allowance. Press the seams open. Fold the top edge of the exterior front bottom B so that it is even with the seam allowance. If you are using vinyl, cork, or leather, you may want to use a piece of double-sided tape to hold this top edge in place. The zipper window now measures 3 eighths of an inch in height. If you happen to be installing a metal logo tag, now is a good time to add it. 
We will now prepare the zippers for the two zipper pockets. Locate the two nine inch zippers and you're going to measure and mark eight inches total for one of the zippers. This eight inch zipper will be used for the front exterior zipper pocket of our bag. Measure and mark eight and a half inches for the second zipper. The eight and a half inch zipper will be used on the exterior back zipper pocket. To prevent the zipper pulls from falling off, sew several stitches at both ends of the zipper, one eighth inch from the markings. Cut the zipper tape where marked on both zippers. Set aside the eight and a half inch zipper for now. You will now need the eight inch zipper you just prepared and zipper pocket front J1. With one J1 piece right side up, pin or clip the zipper right side up along the top eight inch edge. Be sure the zipper pull is on the left. Sew using a scant one quarter inch seam allowance. Pin or clip the opposite side of the zipper along the top eight inch edge of the remaining J1 piece. This time you want to make sure that the zipper pull is on the right side. Once again, sew using a scant one quarter inch seam allowance. Press the right sides of the J1 pieces away from the zipper. Place the J1 pieces wrong side up and extend the pockets above and below the zipper. Draw a center line on the wrong side of the J1 pieces. And this center line will help when we are installing the pocket in the zipper window in the next step to keep the zipper pocket centered. Keep the pocket pieces oriented this way for the next step. Working from the right side of the exterior front, center the zipper window over the zipper. Match the center markings on the exterior front and the wrong side of the J pieces. Use double-sided tape above and below the zipper teeth to secure. Remember to keep the pockets extended above and below the zipper just as you had them in step 10. Keeping the zipper pocket pieces out of the way, sew all the way around the zipper window using a 1 8 inch seam allowance and move the zipper pull out of the way as needed when sewing. When sewing around the zipper window, I like to begin along the bottom straight edge. I begin by locking a few stitches in place, back stitching a couple of times, and I use a longer stitch length usually between three and a half and four. To maneuver around the zipper pull, I leave my needle in a down position, lift the presser foot, move the zipper pull, and then resume sewing. When I get to the end of the straight side of the zipper window, I will leave my needle in a down position, pivot, and then slowly stitch using my hand wheel to sew around the curved edge of the zipper window. Place the J1 pieces right sides together. The bottom edges of the pocket pieces will be uneven. Pin or clip the sides of the pocket together. Move the panel exterior out of the way and sew the pocket sides using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. As I'm sewing over the zipper teeth, I'm going to backstitch a few times to reinforce. Repeat on the opposite side of the pocket pieces.
Trim the J1 side seam allowances close to the stitching. I'm using a pair of ordinary paper cutting scissors to cut through the zippers and then I use my good fabric scissors to cut through the J1 pocket pieces. Turn the exterior front right side up. Close the remaining side of the pocket by basting 1 8 inch from the bottom edge of the exterior front. Trim the overhanging J1 pocket even with the bottom edge of the exterior front. Set aside the exterior front for now. Locate zipper pocket facing back G and its paper pattern piece. Turn both wrong side up. Place the paper pattern piece on top of the fabric piece G. Use a fabric pen to trace the zipper window rectangle onto the wrong side of G. I like to use a ruler to make sure that the rectangle is straight and even. Once I've traced the top and bottom narrow ends of the zipper window, then I'm using my ruler to mark the long straight edges. The total size of the zipper window is 3 8 inches by 7 inches. Locate exterior back C and place right side up. Just as we did with the exterior front A, we will mark the top and bottom centers on the right side and refer to step 3 for marking centers if needed. Right sides together, place zipper pocket facing back G on the upper left side of C, matching the curve and the side edge. Pin or clip in place. In a moment, we will stitch around the rectangle that we traced. For a really nice finish to your zipper window, I wanted to share a method that I use. I just stitch along the long straight sides, but I do not stitch across the, the top and bottom narrow edges. So to begin, I make sure that I backstitch several times. The reason it's so important to backstitch a few times is because in this method I'm showing you, we are only sewing along the two long seven inch lines. When I reach the end of the seven inch line, I again am going to backstitch several times. I'm going to sew the opposite long side of the rectangle in exactly the same way. I'm going to backstitch several times at the beginning and at the end of the 7 inch stitching line I will again backstitch several times. Cut across the center of the stitch rectangle through all layers of fabric and interfacing, stopping about one half inch from the top and the bottom of the rectangle. Cut out Y-shaped corners at the top and the bottom. Be careful though not to cut through the stitching. I am now pressing the facing along the stitching of the zipper window rectangle and then I will push the facing through the opening. By not sewing the top and bottom narrow ends of the zipper window rectangle, it reduces the bulk and I find that the finished rectangle lies much neater and flatter. So once I've pushed the facing from the right side of the exterior back to the wrong side, I am going to press again so that the facing is nice and neat and I am making sure that I am carefully uh, pressing along the edge of the zipper window rectangle. Here's a view of the back panel with the facing pressed and uh, we are ready now to install the zipper pocket. You will now need the prepared eight and a half inch zipper and zipper pocket back J2. With one J2 piece right side up, pin or clip the zipper right side up along the left edge. Be sure the zipper pull is at the top. Sew using a scant quarter inch seam allowance. 
Pin or clip the opposite side of the zipper along the left edge of the remaining J2 piece. This time, be sure the zipper pull is at the bottom. Once again, sew using a scant quarter inch seam allowance. Press the J2 pieces away from the zipper. Place the J2 pieces wrong side up. Extend the pockets to the left and the right. We will keep the pockets oriented this way for the next step. As we did before, use double-sided tape on both sides of the zipper teeth. Working from the right side of the exterior back, center the zipper window over the zipper. Keeping the pocket pieces out of the way, sew all the way around the zipper window using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. And once again, move the zipper pull out of the way as needed while sewing. Place the pocket pieces right sides together. The side edges of the pocket will be uneven. Pin or clip the top and the bottom of the pocket together. And just as in step 12, move the exterior back out of the way and sew the top and bottom of the pocket pieces using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Trim the seam allowances close to the stitching. Close the remaining edge of the pocket by basting 1 8 inch from the side edge of the exterior back. Trim the overhanging J2 pocket piece even with the side of the exterior back. The two exterior zipper pockets are now complete. Join me in the next video as we create the adjustable strap and lining for your Meridian sling. Thanks for watching. Happy sewing!